Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, Bobby, you goop. For heaven's sakes, will you stop drooling? Now, come on, come on. You can eat better than this. Now, look, Bobby, open your mouth. Come on. Pop will be home any minute. I don't intend to spend another second with you then. Oh, no, you... You hoodlum. Oh, look at it. Oatmeal all over the place. Well, you certainly have that child of ours under control. David, you been eavesdropping? I mean, eavesdropping? You're just lucky that he threw the oatmeal on the floor and not at you. Hello, boy. Anytime you want to throw oatmeal, you just go right ahead and throw it. Smear it all over the place. Don't let yourself start being bossed by a woman. Would you please mind leaving my kitchen this minute, Mr. Norton? Here, give me the rag. I'll help. Where, where are Fritz and Bertha? Go away, go away. Go on, Jack. This is not man's work. I gave Fritz and Bertha the evening off. You did? Yeah. You mean that we're all alone here? Don't you love it? We're supposed to go out to dinner tonight. Nonsense. I have it cooking in the stove well, right now. Whether you have now. it cooking in the stove or not, we're supposed to go out to dinner tonight. Now, now Claudia, listen to I'm me. I'm listening, darling. For the last time I repeat to you, we are supposed to go out to dinner tonight. All right. You're so smart. Who are we supposed to go out to dinner with tonight with? A friend of mine, Johnson, from college, who lives down near Stamford. Well, I don't know anybody, Johnson, who lives down near Stanford, and you know it. I told you I met him on the train, on the that train. I hadn't seen him for years, and that he invited us to dinner. When? Two weeks ago. Be still, Bobby. Shh, hush. Well, we can't go. That's all there is to it. We can't go. But we have to go. We can't. I made Fritz and Bertha go out. Do you mean to say that you forgot all about it? Of course I forgot. Well, of course. Of course. Well, of course. So that's the kind of woman if I met. If that's the kind of woman you met, I wonder how I forgot. Very simple. You didn't remember. And you, hush. It's enough out of you. Why didn't you remind me, darling? What? I said, why didn't you remind me this morning? Why should I remind you? Well, it's the least you could have done. He's your friend. Or could it be, Mr. Norton, that mm. you no, all forgot... Right, all right, all right, all right. I'll confess. Okay. I, I forgot, too. I thought so. But that doesn't change our having to go. Oh, ho, ho, the great man forgot. I ran into Paul Johnson on the train tonight, and, well, you can guess the rest. Darling, I'll never mind you if you forgot to, but to, you, to, to invite us just for tonight is just too much. Well, it was two weeks ago. Why'd you have to insist that Fritz and Bertha go out just for tonight? Because I night? have an infallible instinct for doing the right thing at the wrong time. I'll take no insults from you. Well, come on, we'd, we'd better go upstairs and get dressed. Besides, it'll be nice for you to know some people who, who who live not too far away. I'm not interested in people who live not too far away. Well, nobody cares what you're interested in. Oh. It'll be nice anyway. It's no reason to look so morose and put upon. Do I look morose? You certainly I always do. wanted to look morose and tragic. Well, you do. Listen, David, now we have to talk seriously. All right. It's all very fine to say we have to go, but we can't. We cannot leave the baby alone. He's too young. Oh, I see. He needs somebody to talk to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't know how to use the phone yet to call up in case something happens. Oh, I see. Although nothing ever does happen. Still, you have to... He, uh, he ought to be able to take care of himself by now. The backwards child. Isn't he? Mm -hmm. Well, what do we do? I don't know. What do other people do? I don't know. They get a sitter, I guess. Now, don't look so blank. A sitter. You know, a sitter to sit with him. Well, they uh, didn't have sitters in my day. It's a new profession, Grandpa. Mm -hmm. Well, just where does one go to find one of these sitters? I don't know. We never had one. I'm going to get somebody to sit on him. <laughs> We've escaped sitters so beautifully with Mama and Fritz and Bertha here all the time. You know, we certainly are lucky. We said it will be late oh, if we don't decide on Bobby. who is going to sit soon. Now, David, we can't get just anybody, you know. Well, of course we can't get just anybody, but we've got to we get somebody. Who do we know around here? We must know somebody. We know lots of people. Now, who could we get? Gertrude! Gertrude, fine, fine. Gertrude's in Philadelphia. No, no, no. Now, think, David, think. I'm thinking. Who I'm are thinking. our neighbors, our neighbors? 
Because I can't get a stranger, especially the no, first time. No, certainly can't. Let me see, let me see. The way you women pamper your children. Neighbors. Rob them of all their independence from the day they're born. Mm. You've got to have a sitter. Gotta, Heartbreaking, isn't you got to sit. David, I know, Who? I know. Who? Delilah Tucker. Delilah. She knows the house. She knows the baby. She lives right down the road. What do you think? Oh, that old woman, no. Now, she's only 78. Well, you mean you're going to trust my son with a woman who is 78 years now, old? Now who's robbing who of independence? Well, what, what would she know now? What would she do if he started to cry? She'll know what to do. And what makes you think he'll start crying? I don't know. Anyway, Delilah is a grown woman. Also, she has instincts. I don't trust instincts, especially Delilah's instincts. Well, can't be helped. Delilah it is. And we're lucky if she will, too. Hey, David, take my shoes out of the closet while I call up Delilah, would you? Heavens, I hope she can come over tonight. Well, I'm all dressed. Delilah ought to be getting here any minute now. We certainly were lucky she could come. I, I, don't, I don't know what I'd have done if she couldn't. David, what, what would we have done if she couldn't? I don't know. What's the difference? There she is now. I'll go down and let her in. Tuck her here. Delilah's voice certainly has changed, hasn't it? David, it's Mr. Tucker. Where are you, young and big? Oh, we're upstairs, Mr. Tucker. Come on up. I'm coming. David, what's Gerard Tucker doing here now? I don't know, but we'll soon find out. My, uh, my sister Delilah said her chillblains kicked up. Oh, oh dear. She said it was yes. her chillblain. I said it was cold feet. Oh, no. <coughs> Didn't want her to break her promise to a neighbor, so I come instead. You can't... Come to sit with your baby. You? No, no, there. Well, that, that, that's awfully sweet of you, Mr. Tucker. I certainly do appreciate your neighborliness, oh, but... Oh, think nothing we... of it. There's always a first time for everything. A first time? You uh, don't think I go around making a profession of babysitting, do you? Oh, Mr. Tucker, we trust you implicitly. Bobby, meet Mr. Tucker. Oh, David. Now, you hush up. Say, uh, he's kind of puny for a baby. He is not. He's enormous for seven months. Uh, fact remains, I'd be scared to touch him. Well, the truth of the matter is that he, uh, he looks puny to me too, Mr. Tucker. But I tell you, uh, a mother's eyes are like a magnifying glass. David. Now, go right ahead. Get acquainted with him, Mr. Tucker. For tonight, he's yours. I don't want no part of him. Uh, he ain't no bigger than a drowned weasel. <laughs> hey, hey, kind of homie. Bobby. But he's kind of cute he in a way, though, I now. guess. Say, uh, is he delicate? Well, he'll break if you drop him on his head, Mr. Tucker, but otherwise he's not particularly delicate. I ain't the kind of a man who likes to pick up babies. Well, that's a relief. Now, I'm warning you, I believe in being strict with them. I don't believe in sparing the rod. Nope. My pappy gave me plenty of good wellings. Made a man of me. Yes, did. <laughs> eh, stop worrying, though, you young feller. I ain't aiming to well you yet. Not till your ma's turned her back. <laughs> Say, you uh, got any directions for me? Well, we'll, uh, we'll put him to bed before we go and pray he sleeps. And we'll give you our telephone number. That is where we'll be and uh, but, but you can call us. If he cries, Mr. Tucker, well, if he cries, Mr. Tucker, you might have to pick him up. Never! What would he go and cry for? Well, he might be thirsty or he, well, you, you might have to change his trousers. Change his you know. Ma'am, I'm 86 years old, and I ain't changed the baby's trousers to this day. <laughs> ain't no time for me to start changing trousers, no. Well, it's, it's never too late, Mr. Tucker. A, a man of your age, Mr. Tucker, so young, so full of life. Why, why this will be a new experience for you. I think you'd welcome it. Ma'am, I ain't old, but there's some things a man just don't do. Oh, now, Mr. Tucker, not men like you and I. Why, uh, we do everything. I guess we do. Well, it could be if you give me a slight demonstration. I might swing it, but I ain't I ain't going to let it become a habit. I'm warning you. We wouldn't dream of letting it become a habit, Mr. Tucker. Well, come on, we'll go in the nursery and show you around. Uh, things a man's got to do for his neighbors. Say, uh, Mr. Norton, you won't go spreading the word around, will you? I wouldn't want people to know. No, no, no Mr. Tucker, I know exactly how you feel. Besides, if I did spread the word around, you'd be so in demand as a babysitter, we'd, well, we'd never be able to get you back for ourselves. So uh, we'll keep this just between you and us. Well, right? see that you do, young fella. See that you do. Oh, oh, I will. Here we are. And I'll, I'll just put Bobby right to bed, and he'll sleep before you know it. Won't you, Bobby? 
If he's smart, he won't wake up. Uh, he, uh, he sure is puny. If you don't stop saying that, I'm not going to... I don't gonna... see what folks see in babies. I'll take a seven-month pig or seven-month horse or seventh-month calf any day to a seven-month baby. Uh. And baby chicks, when they're born, they're a dang sight cuter than baby babies is. Still, I... Guess what must be, must be, that's all. Yes, and I'm afraid that this must be. Say, uh, reckon I was ever a baby like this one, Mr. Norton? Yeah, I reckon you were. I can't remember it. Can't remember it for a bean, not for a bean, no. <laughs> well, uh, I guess this uh, baby don't believe he'll ever be like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the joke's on him. He will be. Now he's all tucked in, ready to sleep. Any uh, further instructions, ma'am? Oh, 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 yes. You, you've you got to let the cat, uh, let the cat come in. And the dog go out. And the baby's hot water bottle is on the side of the stove. Oh, and don't give the baby more any. than two puffs of your pipe. That's as much as he's allowed. Eh? Two puffs. Oh, and if you don't watch out, he'll beat your checkers. He's very bright. Hey, now you're pulling my whiskers, so skidoodle. Leave me to my chores here. Go on now. Oh, Mr. Tucker, we have a nice lace shawl. It belonged to, to Claudia's grandmother. Oh, yes. Now, if you'd like it over your head. And I have some knitting to be done, if you if you want to finish it. And there's a rocking chair downstairs in the living room. It'd be just right for you. You could put your feet up by the fire. Mm-hmm. Would you like some slippers? Get going, I says, before I lose my good nature now. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Mr. Tucker, you're the perfect neighbor. And the perfect babysitter, too. Then I'll let you folks in on a little bit of a secret. Oh, what, I love secrets. If there be anything I hate... Anything I can't appreciate or warm up to, ma'am, it's babies. David, do you do you honestly think we should? Yep, I hate babies almost worse than anything. Why, well, look at this here picky puny baby. He... <laughs> I'll be god dang. He's smiling at me. Why, you sly little codger, you. Come here, come to Grandpa. Kitchy, 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 cool. February is a hospitable month. Two birthdays of great men to celebrate, to say nothing of St. Valentine's Day. If you're planning a party, or you think friends might stop in to visit, have your grocer or service station attendant put a case of Coca-Cola in the car next time you're out. Coke makes party giving easy, friendly, and pleasant. Well, Joe, it looks like our babysitter is none other than Jared Tucker himself. <laughs> yes. You feel safe, David? I wouldn't leave the baby with him if I didn't. You know, what I'm wondering about is, uh, do you think Mr. Tucker is safe? Well, Mr. Tucker, I see what you mean. (laughs) (laughs) Taking care of a baby for the first time is a pretty rattling affair. You're telling me. And between us, it isn't the first time for me anymore, but it's still rattling. You know, I almost wish it were tomorrow already. So I could find out just what's going to happen between Bobby and Jared. Patience, it's almost tomorrow. Then I'll see you then. I'd better be hustling now. Have fun. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>